fact, we have got very big issues facing this country. You. Uh, you've said health is our number one crisis. It is. Attend to health because in health, whereas in other things you can fix it up over time, in health people die. Yes, And they're that's dying right. without treatment. And I'm saying to the people, the number one part of our policy is this is your biggest crisis. Yes. We are stopping people undemocratically, elitist in the extreme, taking over the country from the mass majority who don't like what they see. Do you know what the issues are for many of the people that I meet out and about around the country? I know that you're out and about around the country too. Uh, it's yeah. rebuilding their lives yes. down in Gisborne and yes. Kaidafati. Exactly. We've got problems like health. We've got Gabriel Cyclone, Gabriel disaster. These things need to be fixed. Yes. And you've got politicians waving their hands around on TV and been talking to you about what they're going to do in every other area that doesn't matter whilst they don't deal with areas that do matter. We're getting back to the real fundamentals of New Zealanders and New Zealand people want to know about first world wages. They want our health system to work properly for them. They want educational escalators to take their people as far as they can go. And they want housing that is safe and they can afford. We've never left off those four things. So what I took from your speech yesterday was that this is a war on woke. Well, it is because what we've seen, sadly, in this country, and so many people are the victims of it, is a full-scale attack on Western values and the kind of society which is the reason why so many tens of millions want to come and live in this country, because we have democracy, we have freedom. And our institutions are under full-scale attack, subtly, without any authority, any mandate at all. And we've got to defend ourselves here and turn that around. We've got to win this battle, because otherwise we will never recognise the inheritance our parents gave us. It feels very much like sort of culture war politics. Do you think we are in a culture war here in New Zealand? They have declared the war and they're not going to win it. Well, you've got a whole lot of elitist people who are making all these changes without so much as any consultation in education with parents uh, or with the population out there. The Joe Bloggs and Mary Bloggs out there, the taxpayers' hard-earned money is being spent on countless projects, which is not to the advantage of this country. Who is they? Well, there are those people who are saying, for example, that this is a colonising country and that we're a retarded society and we have to change the whole thing, beginning with our constitution. Then they argue that we've got to have two types of government in this country, 50-50, and that was, that's what partnership means. They argue, for example, that Treaty Waitangi was about partnership when it was, was not. And then they argue that the Maori did not cede sovereignty. Why do I hop on Air New Zealand, for example, and find that I'm, find that I'm flying on a walker in the sky? It's preposterous. Why do I see <laughs> Waka Kotahi, you know, a, a boat on the road going down the street in big words and a little bit in English? Why am I going to, for, for example, hospitals where everything is Māori is big, that's for 5% of the population understand Māori, and 95% don't understand. Well, see what I mean? I do see what you mean. I, I, could, no, I could go on and on, and I did in my speech yesterday set out those circumstances. This is such a pleasure to <laughs> chat to you.